arguments against the date of Daniel's writing consist only of unbelieving objections rather than historical evidence. The dominance of the Third Empire continued until about 169 BC when the Greeks lost control of ancient Macedon to the fourth kingdom of Daniel's prophecy. The history of Rome's origin is cloaked in mystery. According to legend, the city was founded by the twins Romulus and Remus in 753 BC. The twins were the illegitimate sons of Mars, the god of war, who raped a vestal virgin while she slept. When the twins were outcast, they were suckled by a she-wolf, an event commemorated in many Roman images. Another version of the story tells of a shepherd finding them and taking them to his wife, a former prostitute. Part of the mystery of these accounts comes from the use of the word looper, which in Latin means both she-wolf and prostitute, or harlot. In time, the twins would found the city of Rome, named after Romulus, who would murder his brother Remus in a quarrel and become Rome's first king. After a long reign, Romulus vanished into a thunderstorm and supposedly became a god. Later, he reappeared and, descending from the sky, declared to those who listened that, quote, it is the will of heaven that Rome be the capital of the world. Centuries later, when Rome went from being a republic to a world empire, it was said of her first emperor, Augustus, that he subjected the whole wide earth to the rule of the Roman people. Though mightiest of the four, God's prophecy makes it clear that this fourth kingdom would be divided, a division symbolized by the feet, part of iron and part of clay. Yet some scholars find an earlier division in the two legs of iron. The Roman is depicted by the two legs of this image. And the Roman Empire was indeed split in two, just as that uh, image foretold. The eastern leg of the old Roman Empire. In other words, up till recently, you know, all, a lot of the prophecy buffs have been looking at the old Roman Empire and looked at Europe and drew this nice little circle around Europe and said, well, you know, it's going to come from one of these countries. Well, what most people forget is that Rome had an eastern leg, and that was the, the Byzantine Empire, Constantinople, until it fell, I think, 14-something or other to, to the Turks and became Istanbul. Uh, it was split in two in 1054 A.D. when the Pope in Rome excommunicated Michael Seriolarius, the Patriarch of, of Constantinople, and it was split between Roman Catholicism in the West, Eastern Orthodoxy, Greek and Russian and so forth Orthodoxy in the East. So it was split religiously uh, at that time. It had already been split in 330 AD when Constantine moved his headquarters to Constantinople. You had this whole thriving civilization for you know over a thousand years that was the Eastern Empire and didn't break down really until you know the Muslims finally took it over. So important is the understanding of the four world empires that God showed Daniel another vision of these kingdoms, symbolized by four great beasts. The four beasts parallel the four dimensions of the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. All four beasts are history. There have been four world empires, the Babylonian, the Medo-Persian, the Grecian, and the Roman. While most researchers agree that the first three beasts have come, it is this fourth beast that has yet to reach its complete fulfillment. Of the vision, Daniel wrote, Behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. And there came up among them another little horn. In this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came. Then the angel who stood by said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on earth, and shall devour the whole earth. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. 
The Ten Kings are also represented by the ten toes of the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Daniel prophesied that in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So we know that the millennial kingdom of Christ can only occur at, when, at a time when there are ten kings ruling the world. <laughs> this revived Roman Empire will come under ten heads. Now I never believed they were the ten nations of Western Europe because the Roman Empire itself was much larger than Western Europe. It went all down through Syria and you know, Turkey and Syria and, and Lebanon and, and all across North Africa and so forth. Uh, so it will be the world will be divided into ten regions under ten local heads, and already for computer reasons, for banking reasons, the world has been divided. The Club of Rome divided the world 25 years ago into ten regions, and that's pretty much the way it's laid out out today. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will establish a kingdom. So if the rabbis had known that one prophecy, if the disciples of John the Baptist had known that one prophecy, it would have solved a lot of problems for them. Because John the Baptist sent two disciples, you remember, from prison. He said to Jesus, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? Hey, Lord, I ought to at least be prime minister. I introduced you to Israel. And if you're going to take the throne of, of your father David, how, how, how come I'm about to get my head cut off? It doesn't make sense. They thought the kingdom would be established then. No, no, no. It will only be established when those ten kings, in the days of those ten kings. These ten kings were also witnessed by the Apostle John, who saw a vision of a beast with seven heads and ten horns. The angel said to him, The ten horns which you saw are ten kings. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So the world is to be ruled by ten men who will ultimately give their power to one man, the little horn of Daniel's vision, the mysterious figure known as the man of sin and son of perdition. Antichrist. There are some people who say, well, the Antichrist will be somebody from the past like Hitler or Genghis Khan or, you know, who knows what, uh, resurrected. No, Satan cannot resurrect anybody. He does not have that power. It says he has a deadly wound. See, people talk about this. Is, the fourth beast represents the Antichrist and the revived Roman Empire. Then it says, I saw one of his heads. He's got uh, seven heads. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wanted after the beast. So this is not a resurrection. The, the beast has never been killed. You could read your history. I don't know much about history, but I, I read a little bit of history and I can tell you, I mean, you know, that all down through history, all the great families in Europe I mean, they've all dreamed of the revival of the Roman Empire. This empire has never been dead. It was wounded, as it were, to death. But the deadly wound was healed. This is a healing, not a resurrection. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon who gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The Bible says that all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Scholars believe this worship denotes a one world religion focused on both the dragon, whom the Bible calls Satan, and the beast or Antichrist. This apostate church, as some have called it, is symbolized by yet another figure in John's revelation. The angel said to him, come here. I will show you the judgment of the great harlot that sits upon many waters. So he carried me away, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. I mean, this is incredible. 